Romans 12 verse 2 tells us, Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to Him and is perfect. Pride is a characteristic of the world system and requires God's transformation. Listen as Pastor Bartlett explains. In our society, if you desire to be respected and admired, you must be better than everyone else. The problem is that not everybody can be better than everyone else. For every person who wins in any field of endeavor, there are usually many more whose efforts go unnoticed. In order to insulate ourselves from the insanity of pride, we must recognize and appreciate that we all have limitations and that there will always be persons who are more or less adept in every area of life than we are. In Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis wrote the following, Pride is essentially competitive. Pride gets no pleasure out of having something, only out of having more of it than the next man. We say that people are proud of being rich or clever or good-looking, but they are not. They are proud of being richer or cleverer or better-looking than others. If everyone else becomes equally rich or clever or good-looking, there would be nothing to be proud about. It is the comparison that makes you proud, the pleasure of being above the rest. Once the element of competition has gone, pride has gone. It has been said that the center of the psychological problems of human beings is becoming immersed in themselves. Many of those in mental institutions are suffering from self-centered preoccupation in various forms. The superintendent of a mental hospital was once asked if the patients in the institution were beside themselves. The superintendent replied, No, they are very much themselves. They have no interest beyond themselves. That's why they are here. When Adam transgressed the commandment of God in the garden, his sinless perfection was lost and his heart was corrupted. Pride formed and took up residence within his nature and, like a highly contagious disease, it spread to every one of his descendants. The pride in the human nature appears to have developed a radar system which constantly monitors everything that comes across its path. This built-in mechanism captures every opportunity to exalt, promote, and protect its host, the self. In this way, pride maintains its fortified position within the human heart. In essence, pride is like a vicious watchdog, ever protecting self who is its master. The more self-centered a person becomes, the more proud he or she will be. 
the center of salvation is to save us from ourselves. This is not to say that the self in itself is evil. The self is evil if it becomes the center of itself. For when that occurs, then self becomes God. The first commandment in the law strikes at this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. And the greatest and most persistent of rival gods is the self. The first thing that our Lord struck at in his teaching was self-centeredness. The first beatitude in the Sermon on the Mount was, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. If we shift the focus of our lives from self to God, by surrendering self to God, then we become God-centered persons instead of self-centered persons. When we become God-centered persons, then self is no longer a problem but a possibility. Jesus Christ said that the kingdom of heaven belongs to us. We don't merely belong to the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to us. All of the resources of the kingdom of heaven are at the disposal of the person who has surrendered self to God. The Christian who has not surrendered self fully to God prevents the Lord from dealing radically with his or her self-life. Such a person will view everything that comes their way through the lens of pride. All aspects of life, family, relationships, work, amusement, and yes, even ministry will be negatively affected by pride. Their thoughts, words, and actions will become polluted by it. The unsurrendered Christian may claim that Jesus Christ is the Lord of their life. They may sing songs and testify that it is so. But the truth is that pride alone enjoys that position in his or her life. Pride rules and controls the heart of the unsurrendered Christian and eventually gets what it wants. Pride will allow only those things that serve its own interests to remain in their consciousness. Pride will increasingly erect a barrier against submission to God, making it increasingly more difficult for the Holy Spirit to penetrate and bring the individual to a place of brokenness and genuine repentance. The person will only submit and surrender to the Lord as much as self and pride permit. Jonathan Edwards said, Alas, how much pride the best have in their hearts. It is the worst part of the body of sin and death. The first sin that ever entered into the universe and the last that is rooted out. It is God's most stubborn enemy. While the world clamors for notoriety and competes for first place, what should be the attitude of believers? Matthew 19 verse 30 says, But many who are first will be last, 
and the last first. Until next time, think on these things.